Hey guys, so we're moving on to question 4.2. Okay, question 4.2 says table 6 on Annex to F shows the total number of storms from 2015 to 20, 2010 to 2015 that affected four world oceanic regions as well as the cost of damages in million US dollars during this period. Some of the data in the table have been omitted. Okay, broken live graphs representing the number of storms for three regions have been drawn on the answer sheet. So we have a graph, we have graphs over here, right? And then we also have the annexture. So we're using two different pieces of information. So don't get confused, just realize we're going to be using two different pieces. Okay, so it says determine the missing value in. So the missing value in here is for the Indian, um, Indian region right, for 2011 and for 2013. And we see that's N in both cases, so we think that it's probably going to be equal. But we don't know, right, from that information. We have to go over here to the graphs, okay? Ignore what I've drawn up there. That was a mistake I made, so that's why I'm refilming here, okay? The purple, right, the purple is the Indian, okay? The purple is the Indian. And we see in 2013 and, 2010, in 2013 and 2011, it was 10, right? So it was the same. Okay, for the Indian. So it was N equals 10. Okay, let's now go to 4.2.2. So it says draw another broken line graph on the answer sheet representing the total number of storms affecting the Western Pacific region from 2010 to 2015. Okay, so we see the number of storms here for the Western Pacific, right? Importantly, we see that 2010 is at the bottom and 2015 is the, the top, right? So actually, generally, it's the other way around with data. So it's important to note this, but in the graph that we're graphing, they've done it from 2015 to 2010. So they've done it in the same order as we have in the um, set of data in this table. Okay, so 2015... Is 39 so 39 is just under 40 what's important is that each of you important for you to note each of these smaller segments here is 2 right so between 30 and 40 there are five different segments and each of them represent 2 okay so I plotted 39 I plotted 30 I plotted 52 I plotted 34. Originally, I plotted it as 24, and that's why I'm refilming, right? So ignore the, the orange, right? And just look at this bluey color, okay? 34, 40, and then 19, okay? Perfect. But now what we need to do is we need to also put in a key like I have over here so that the marker knows which line to look at, right? It's kind of obvious because of the color, but you must be specific, right? So it's Western Pacific, okay? That's that graph there, okay? Let's now look at 4.2.3. So 4.2.3 says, name the region that showed a downward trend in the number of storms experienced from 2010 to 2014. So basically saying that the number of um, storms that were in 2014 was less than the number in 2010, and that trend was seen, right? So it's important because now we have to read this way, right? So we look at 2010, and then we know that this is 10 here, and this is 10 here right? So we see that that one went up, so it's definitely not that. That one also went up, so it's definitely not that. These two here both went down. Good. Kind of stayed the same there. There it went down. Then here it went down, right? So over these, um, what two years are we looking? Oh, 2010 and 2014, right? So over these five years, it decreases. So we know that it works for North and Atlantic. Here, it went from five to 10 back to eight. So it didn't, it wasn't decreasing the whole time, right? Here, didn't decrease necessarily between 2011 and 2012, but it didn't increase, right? So it is a downward trend. Okay, so the region is Northern Atlantic. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you on graph. Here is North Atlantic. Okay, so they're basically just testing whether you can read off the graph. I mean, read off this annexure but also testing whether you can see that this is 2010 going up to 2015 and not the other way around, which is generally the case. Let's now get to our last question of 4.2. The news reporter compared the total cost of damages caused in the West, Western Pacific and Northern Atlantic regions to the total number of storms from 2011 to 2015. He stated that the more storms a region experienced, the greater the amount of damage caused by them. Verify, showing all calculations and give reasons. Okay, that's an interesting one. It's now asking us to verify and give reasons. Okay, 
right? Whether it's a statement is valid. So there's a number of things we need to do. We need to do some calculations. We need to say whether it's right or wrong. And we need to give some reasons, right? So it's nine marks, quite a lot. Let's see what we can do, right? So I'm going to first do this. I'm going to separate my page into two sections. I'm going to call one the Western Pacific and the other one the Northern Atlantic, okay? So now what it said is it said that the total number of storms, right? So the total cost, we're looking at the total cost of damages and the total number of storms. And he stated that the greater the, um, the more storms, the greater the amount of damage. So we need to look at the total cost and the total number of storms for each of these and see whether where there's more storms, whether there is more damage. Okay. So I'm going to say a number of storms. I'm going to do it for both sides. Okay. So the number of storms in the Western Pacific is between what dates, right? Between 2011 and 2015, right? So we're going 2011 to 2015. So I'm going to say here 40 plus 34 plus 52 plus 30 plus 39. Okay, those are all for Western Pacific. Then for Northern Atlantic, we're going to go from 2011, 19 plus 19 plus 13 plus 9 plus 12. Okay, so let's add all of these together just to find out the number of storms. So, I mean, just looking at it, you should be able to say mm, West, Western Pacific definitely has more. Okay, so let's put that all in. Okay, so I'm getting 195, right? in the Western Pacific, right? Um, and let's see about the other one. So we say 19 plus 19 plus 13 plus 9 plus 12. So that is 72, right? So we see that the North Atlantic has, um, has a lot fewer storms than the Western Pacific. Now let's work out the total damages. Okay. Total damages. So we're doing this for both sides. Okay. So let's see. For Western Pacific, um, we have from 2011 to 2015, we have 10600 zero, 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 plus 6080 zero, plus 22800. Zero, zero. Okay. I'm literally adding all of these together. Plus 8410 zero, plus 10200. Okay, so that's for that. Then for North Atlantic, we have 590232 plus 1510 plus 75 plus 2100. So here you see I actually summed them that way. This way I summed them this way. But it doesn't matter. Still the same years, right? Still the same years. We give you the same cost regardless. Okay, let's not add all of those together and get our cost. So... Okay, 8410 plus 10200. Okay, so I'm getting 58090. And this is um, US dollar millions. Okay, remember to put in that um, a different uh, currency. Okay, because remember, it is a money amount. It's important to quantify the numbers you're using. Otherwise, it could be re related to anything. Okay. So it's 98332 million US dollars. Okay, so we know, can you see here, where there were fewer storms, it was more expensive than where there was more storms. Okay, so is the statement true? I don't think it is, right? Because the statement was, right, he stated that the more storms region experienced, the greater the amount of damage caused by them. So, therefore, right, um, statement is not true, okay? Because we see the Western Pacific had the most storms, but the North Atlantic had the greatest amount of damage, okay? So that's the reason, because it said, show calculations, verify, and give a reason. So we've done all of that except for giving a reason. So we say here, Western Pacific had more storms, but North Atlantic had greater cost damage okay that's important okay 
So instead of doing another video for 4.3, I'm just going to put it in here, right? Because it's a short one. Let's just do 4.3. I'm going to start on a new page just so that you can see, right? And it's still working with this um, Mozambican um, scenario. Okay, so let's see what it says. It says, in 2016, the Mozambican Information Department recorded the following data. Okay, so we have a birth rate of 38,3 births per 1,000 population, deaths of 11,9 deaths per 1,000 population, and migration of 1.9 per 1,000 population. Then it said, what is, the Mozambique, what is Mozambique's percentage population growth for 2016? Okay, so we're going to say, births right because that's a new that's a new um lives right into the country births minus deaths right minus the migration right so it's basically those who are born those who die and those who leave the country right that would be the growth rate so the births are 38.3 per thousand so all of these are per thousand the deaths are 11.9 and 1.9 is the immigration rate per 1,000 population, okay? So the net growth, the net growth is going to be 24.5 per 1,000 population, okay? But it's asked us for a percentage, so that's not a percentage yet, right? How do we do a percentage? Well, we write this as a fraction, right? So our growth rate is 24.5 over 1,000. To get a percentage, we times by 100. Let's put that into our calculator. And that is 2, okay, 2.45%. Okay, so this was just... Um, testing whether you understand what migration means, death, births, and how those all inter integrate together. Okay, so that is the end of this paper, guys. I hope that was helpful, and good luck for your exam.